Department of Agency Subcommittee is now in session. Glad to have all these wonderful looking people out in the crowd. It's Tuesday, February the 1st, 2022, and it's ready to take roll. Chairman Keesling. Keesling, I need to hear your name. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Beck. Here. Representative Bricken? Here. Representative Carr? Here. Representative Carringer? Present. Representative Chisholm? Here. Representative Halford? Here. And Chairman Hulskoff? Present. We have any announcements? Any of the committee members have announcements? You are recognized, Representative Carringer. Thank you, Chairman Hulskoff. Uh, yes, I, I had someone out in the audience. Uh, that I'd like to recognize, and that would be Brad Anders, if he would care to come up to the well. So uh, I, I just uh, wanted to ask uh, Brad Anders to come up, who's my 911 board hang, director. Hang, hang, hang on, hang on. we got to go out of session for him to okay. give a talk. We're now session. Now you're recognized. Thank you. Thank you there. Yeah, so I just wanted to recognize Brad Anders, who has a big job in Knox County operating our 911 board. Brad and I, I was honored to serve on Knox County Commission with him, and he was our chairman for a couple of years. And um, so I, he's here on official business today, and I just wanted to thank him for a great job that he's doing. Uh, for Knox County, as well as representing all the 911 uh, boards in the state of Tennessee and making sure he's also a retired uh, police officer with the city of Knoxville. So I just wanted to thank him for his service and his dedication uh, to Knox County and, and keeping our state and, and all uh, as safe as possible in these days. And so thank you, Brad, and thank you for being here. Thank you, Representative. Does, uh, hang, hang on a minute. Just for the record, state your name and who you're with. Uh, Brad Anders, Knox County uh, 911 Emergency Communications District. Does, does any of the committee members have a question for any of the 911? You are recognized, mm -hmm. thank you, Chairman Keeley. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, what, what is the, your uh, director count over there, uh, Brad? I'm sorry. How many, how many do you have on your board over there? Uh, our board is 11 members. 11 uh, members. Five members are by position, and six members are appointed by the county mayor. Gotcha. And staff, um, uh, we have, in addition? We have 105 staff. Wow. Uh, we, do all the dis we do all the dispatch and call taking. We're a centralized uh, 911 center. We take over 600,000 calls a year, emergency and non-emergency, and we are a centralized dispatch. So we have all of the employees with MOUs between all the agencies. Got gotcha. you. Well, thank you. For, thank you very much for being with us today thank, in your service. Thank you, sir. Thank you, you, Mr. Chairman. Do you have an average response time? Would you know what? Uh, is? Our call time is is within seconds, uh, and our it depends on what agency you're with. If you're talking about response times, um, it, you know our fire and the and police and sheriff are pretty very below uh, national average or above. However, better than national average. How's that? You didn't know you'd go get grilled. Did I you? didn't, but I'm okay with it. <laughs> So, 27 years of law enforcement, I've I've been grilled a lot. We we do appreciate you being here and, and thank you. You know your service. Thank you. It's an honor. To, I'm I'm serving on the state 911 board, and uh, it's an honor to to do that as well. Chairman Brick, can you have a question? Uh, just a, a statement for someone that has followed a little a little bit of the 911 operation. Your format and your operations of Knox County is the way it needs to be done, and I'll just leave it at that. Thank you. We, we, we think it fits us very well. Some districts are, uh, you know, I, I, I make a statement. Some, some districts have more cows than they have people, and so it's a little different. There's still a cost of business to do it that way, but um, our city and county got together in 1986 and formed the district, and it works well for us. So thank you for that, Mr. Brick. Man, your head's going to swell up. You're going to come back to this committee all the time. I don't know if they'll let me back. <laughs> thank you. We are now back in session. We do have a calendar to take up today. We have two bills, and I heard one of them's gonna struggle. 
The other bill is mine. <laughs> you are recognized, Mr. Lambert, Leader Lambert. And uh, the bill we'll be addressing is HB 1680. You are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, and I, I hope this is the simplest bill I ever bring before this committee or any other. It, it literally changes from $50,000 to $75,000. We have amount. a motion to second? Yeah. Okay. Just make sure you're legal. Okay. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, always. Uh, it changes from fifty to 75000 the amount that a charitable organization can raise before they hit the higher audit threshold. Uh, this comes directly from one of my charitable organizations, and many in your districts have probably had this same issue, where if they're very successful and they raise beyond 50000 it costs them a significant amount of funds to do that higher-level audit. We haven't changed this in several years, and so changing from fifty to 75000 after discussing this with the Secretary of State's office seemed like a reasonable place to go. Okay. Any committee members have questions, comments? You are recognized, Chairman Brigham. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, I don't want to take uh, food and bread out of my fellow CPA's uh, life, but just curious, and I, I certainly have uh, followed this back in my professional days. Uh, you know how many charities might be affected by this? You are recognized, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Member? I know the one in my district will. I have not asked the Secretary of State's office, but I will follow up with them and try to get that information on how many go above the 50. I will tell you that, uh, according to at least the charity that reached out to me, a good number of them will stay below that 50 on purpose. So they kind of, they govern themselves back um, so that they don't hit it. Because apparently these can cost several thousand dollars for these higher end audits. It can get relatively expensive. And so that's, I don't know how many, but I know that there are some, and at least one in my district that kind of holds themselves back a little bit so they don't pass the 50. And I'll just add, it is a ex significant cost increase uh, to go to a full audit over either a reviewed statement or a compiled statement. So it uh, this makes sense. Thank you. Other questions, comments? You are recognized, Representative Beck. Thank you. Uh, Leader, uh, this is just for... Uh, non-charitable gaming event is is are we allowed more than one of those a year by a nonprofit? I can't remember. Is this is this an ongoing thing or or a one-time shot? Leader Lambert, let me show. This would be for a one-time. This is the nonprofit charitable gaming license that we allow that we vote on each year in the omnibus bill. Right. Um, this is for that one-time event. Okay, very good. Thank you, sir. Other questions. Question has been called. We are voting on HB 1680. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Bill goes on to full. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and, and members of the committee, and please be as kind to the next bill if y'all don't mind. <laughs> and I'm going to turn my, you want me to move? No. No, 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 no. We're back in session, and we're moving on to item number two, House Bill 1688. I uh, got a motion by Chairman Holtzclaw. We got a motion and a second. Chairman Holtzclaw, you are recognized. And we do have an amendment on this bill, Mr. Chairman. We do have a, uh, I think it's an untimely amendment. Is that correct, that sir? And would you direct us to the, the proper tracking code? The tracking code for this, and it is untimely filed, is 012993. That is correct. 12993. Members, that, uh, if there's no objection, since I think it's just a uh, te technical change, is that correct, it's, Chairman? It's basically a typo, yes. All right. If we will, can we, let's just go ahead and, uh, if that's, que yes, we've got a question there, and we'll go right ahead and, and let's uh, apply that then. We are, uh, okay. The, the amendment does make the bill. Would you want to, ex uh, just a brief explanation, Chairman, of sure. that? Basically what this, this bill does, or the amendment does, it creates a common carrier license uh, for those who transport alcohol. And the three things that we're really trying to attack on this is, number one, it ensures compliance, and it also ensures that we get tax collection on it. And the main thing that I'm really pushing is, we try to ensure that minors 
alcohol don't get in the hands of the miners, and that's that's one big concern that I have. Good, good, yes, correct. Okay, so we do. Let's go ahead and get a motion and a second on this this amendment, and we did though. I think didn't you rush? Okay, uh, Chairman Bricken did that. All right. So all right, let's. Uh, all right, we're ready to. I see no objections to the call in the question on this. Let's get it on the bill. Those in favor, please say aye. Those opposed, like signing. As habit, we are now. That has moved on to the bill itself. Any further questions? Finally, yes, we do. Mr. Representative Beck, you are recognized, sir. Thank you, Chairman Keesling. Is is this bill, um, Mr. Chairman, in response to our concerns last year of leaving uh, uh, packages of liquor on the on, without being signed for and 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 dropping wine without? With, without uh, checking IDs and that type of thing. Good question. It? Chairman Hostclaw, could you address that? You uh, hit it basically spot on head, you know, because that was one of our big things that we uncovered is some of the issues we had there, and that's one of the primary reasons for this bill. And what it will also do, it will increase the fines and charges to these two. All right. Yes, uh, Representative Beck, follow-up question? Fantastic. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. All right. Further questions to Chairman Hostclaw? Any objections to calling the question? We're there. Let's vote. Uh, those in favor of uh, House Bill 1688 as amended, please say aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed like sign the ayes. Have it. And now we will go uh, back out of session, I guess, and I'll pass the gavel over to you. Back to you, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Since you went out, we're going back in. Uh, basically, that concludes our calendar. Is any, do we have anybody who wants to make any announcements? Seeing none, do I have a motion to adjourn? We are adjourned. <laughs>